Hey guys, this is Stefan, and I'm going to give the first of three video tutorials on the Luma Pro system. And this first video is going to be about the lighting system. And I am sitting in here in this little sim I wandered by this morning and thought it'd be kind of fun to shoot and demo at. A um, couple things about this sim is, is uh, um, um, it's got all this particle count, which is kind of annoying. And But I kind of liked it, so I thought I'd uh, give it a try for uh, shooting at here. So what Luma Pro has for the lighting system, the lighting system is mostly up in here, is, is a set of lights, and I give a lights to my model, and she gets these lights and puts them on. And when she does that, um, there are three prim that are now controllable by the HUD. I notice the HUD gave the lights out. It gives as many lights out as you need to the model. And then she wears these lights. And then I can control the lighting properties of these three prim on this model. Now, as you can see, as she moves around or sits or stand or flies or moves to another location, um, those lights stay with her. So you get the lights the way you like it, and then you keep them. Um, let's do a couple things to start with. I'm just going to go to midnight to make it a little creepier. And this particle stuff's kind of ticking me off. So I'm going to just set the particle count to zero and get it out of the way. Uh, by the way, I'm just in this particular scene, scene shooting in high res with the uh, lighting and shadows here. Um, and um, once she wears the lights, they actually don't emit any light to start with. Um, did I set the particle count to zero? No, I did not. Okay, here. Okay, so the, when the lights are first given, they don't admit any light until you actually select one of the four quick presets. Um, there are four of them. The first one is called Butterfly, and um, these four presets are actually fundamental lighting configurations if you buy any real-life book on portrait lighting. Uh, Butterfly is, is um, just a single light, uh, symmetrically high and slightly... Uh, but it lights the face uniformly, creates the shadows by the ears, and if this was real life, there would be a little shadow of a butterfly under her nose. Um, Rembrandt, go study any Rembrandt paintings. Just hit Google Images and take a look at some Rembrandt paintings. He's very famous for this light high and to one side, and sometimes he puts a little accent light on it on the backside to just light that little rim up. Um, rim lighting just captures the rims only and if you look at this thing you'll see that she's got a little rim on here and a little rim on here but her face is otherwise dark and split is kind of a splits the middle here. So I'm going to start with split just to start with. The assumption is is you pick one of these quick presets just to kind of kick things off and then you make some adjustments to it. Now in this particular scene here there's this really cool lamp up here and I'm going to take advantage of that lamp. Uh, for this shot here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this green light and kind of position it such that it, it emits a light very much like if it was that lamp. Now, the way you'd move a light is by touching it. So for example, I want to get this light slightly higher up on her head. If I want to move the light forward, I touch the front of the light and the light moves forward. If I want the light to go down, I touch the bottom of the light and the light goes down and you get the idea. Um, so in this particular one, I want this light um, somewhat closer to her head. So I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to put it up high. And now I'm going to take a look at what I'm getting here. Um, what I'm going to do, just to make sure this is easier to understand, is I'm just going to set the intensity of all three lights to zero. Now the way you do that is, is there's um, a red light, a green light, and a blue light, and there's a set of red, green, and blue buttons, and there's also a set of white buttons. The white buttons are... Um, uh, the sum of red, green, and blue, and so when you hit the white, it sets the control to all three. So I just went to intensity on white and set the value to zero. I could set them all, all the way up. I can set them all the way down. You get the idea here. I'm going to only turn on this green light for a second, so I'm going to, oops, I hit the color. Um, green intensity, I'm going to set to one here, and you can see this light. It's not positioned correctly yet relative to where that light is, so I'm just going to make a couple more tap, 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 and kind of look at the position of it and go, eh, it's good. I'm going to push it a little bit forward so it lights her face a little bit more. And now I've got this light approximately the way I like it here. Um, next thing let's do is, is let's change the color of this green light. Um, right now it's shooting kind of a slightly warm color. I was playing with the lighting colors and I kind of liked cyan. Now cyan is a, in its current form is a little too much for this thing. Um, whatever color you pick, um, um, and these colors by the way are standardized colors. You'll find them in Photoshop, you'll find them in real life uh, photography filter bags, etc. Um, there's a saturation on it, and gosh, I wish I could do that in real life. 
Um, and what a saturation is, is when you click it, is, is how much cyan do you want? You can go all the way to a lot of cyan at 1.5, all the way down to effectively 0.2, which is the cyan's effectively gone and it looks like a white light. So I'm going to sit there and kind of play with the level of cyan until I get something I like. Yeah, something like that's not bad. And uh, you can see kind of the consequence of that. Just her eyes a little bit, so they're a little more reasonable here. Uh, okay, I'm good with that. So now we've got that one light the way we want it. It's definitely dark on this side. Let's get a little more light on this side. I'm actually going to turn the red light into an accent this time. I'm going to move this light, click, click behind a little bit. And let's go ahead and turn the light on. So I'm going to set the red intensity. I could turn it all the way up. That's probably a little much, maybe 0.4, 0.5, etc. Now we can start eh, 0.6. Uh, now it's giving a little um, um, a little accent to her face on that one side. Now let's talk about the color of the red light. Um, I was kind of playing with some different ideas and actually kind of liked orange for it. And maybe take the saturation down 0.6 or something like that. And the thought is is on that is is there's kind of a glow from the environment that we're picking up. Now let's next thing let's talk about is this radius. Now notice that. Um, um, her chest is being lit a lot. If I actually, an avatar is about one and a half to two meters. If I set the radius um, to a very large level, this, by the way, this is the extent of how far the light influences the scene. If I set it to 20, I've lit up the entire scene. I'm within 20 meters, it lights up everything around here. I can set it to 0.25, and it kind of kisses their face. Notice that it kissed her face, but it didn't do much. 0.5 is um, fairly good. Um, what I think I'll do is, is I'm going to set the radius of the red light exclusively down. Oops, if I could press the right button here. Set the radius of the red light to 0.25. So eh, we'll keep it at 0.5. Okay. Now the blue light, um, typically I use to light the outfit. And it's kind of in an outfit lighting position here. Let's turn on the blue light here. And how much lighting do we want on the outfit? And we don't want it to dominate, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Not bad. Ah, uh, now you obviously don't want a bunch of balls in your shot, so there's a simple hide button. Boop, hit the hide button, and the balls go away. And um, we can kind of take a look at this relative to the scene that we have and decide whether we're good or not. Um, I'm actually going to turn the intensity of the green light up a little bit. And now that it's all the way full blast, how do you get more intensity out of it? Well, you can do that with the radius a bit. And then you can create. Um, actually, the fall off will help with that. If I set the fall off to zero, I'm going to have to increase the intensity, uh, the radius of the green light a little bit, 0.75, and there we go. The other thing I can do is actually move the ball a little closer to her, click, click, and with that, there we go, now we got more intensity on her face. So we can kind of now look at the scene and decide whether we're happy with how it looks. Um, it's a little dark over in here. I'm just going to touch this red ball a couple times here. There we go. We've taken out some of that. I do want it to be kind of an intense looking scene here. And I think we are ready to shoot. And I'm just going to hit Alt or uh, Control Tilde and take a couple shots here. Okay, so let's keep going on this thing. Um, I, there's an ability to save a preset. So let me give an example of this thing. Now that we've set these lights the way we want, we might want to save it. I'm going to actually, um, there are nine presets that will actually remember your ball positions. I've got uh, position nine is empty. I'm going to say save this into position nine. And you, it brings up a thing here. It says type 42 and name your presets. So I can go, uh, uh, this is a demo is what I'll call this thing here. So now when I go to preset, preset 9 is this is a demo. Um, I was playing with these lights earlier. Let me give you an example of another lighting config that I had for the same scene here is, um, is this light. Now you can compare that to some of the default configs um, that uh, the lights do. And then uh, yeah, I kind of like my preset 9 actually the best right now. So there we go. And we are off shooting. Um, LumaPro can handle multiple models, and so you can select model and pick another model, give them a set of lights, control their lights, go back to your other model and control their lights. Um, and um, with all of that, you have a tremendous amount of control. And if you notice, I didn't use any resin for this, so I can actually take this into any sim that I want. Okay, that's it, guys.